Two's complement. It's how we do integers, signed integers, in computers. First, you have the width of the number. How many bits? Let's say we have four bits. Two to the four is 16 different values, just four bits. And the first bit is still a sign bit. If it's zero, the number is positive or zero. If it's one, the number is negative. Six, as a four bit binary number, is 0110. To get negative six, we take the two's complement. First, we flip all the bits, 1001. Then we add one. So we carry, and we get 1010. We can do it again if we want negative negative six, also known as positive six. So we flip the bits again, 0101. We add one, we carry, and we get 0110 back. So it is reversible. You can negate, negate, negate all day long, and it'll just flip back and forth. And a zero indicates positive, one indicates negative in the first digit. So let's say we have two numbers. X equals A, B, C, D, and Y equals E, F, G, H. This is not multiplication, this is digits. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H can all be one or zero. If it was multiplication, I would put a dot. This is just digits. So this is two four-bit numbers. Let's say I want to take Y and make it negative. Multiply by negative one, negate it, whatever. Negative Y equals two to the four minus Y. Since we're using four bits, it's two to the four. What is two to the four? Two to the four is one with four zeros. You'll notice that's five bits. Two to the four minus one is four ones. So that's four bits. Now why do we care about that? And what is this? If you want to flip bits, turn a one into a zero and a zero into a one. One minus zero equals one. One minus one equals zero. So if you take one and subtract your bit, you get the other bit. So if we have one, 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 one minus a four bit number, then the result is the four bit number with all the bits flipped. And then we can add one. But what happens if we add one? So we have all ones, which is two to the four minus one. Then we subtract the number we want to flip the bits minus y, then we add one. But that minus one plus one equals two to the four minus y. And that's where that comes from. Flip the bits and add one is exactly the same as two to the four minus the number. So how do I prove that this is a reversible operation? Let's say we have y. Let's say I want to negate y. Two to the four minus y. Now I'm saying that it's minus y. What if I negate it again? This should get me back to positive y. Two to the four minus whatever, so two's complement and then two's complement, equals two to the four minus two to the four plus y equals y. So it's reversible, we get y back. And if you're paying attention, you may have been screaming at your computer screen or phone or whatever. Because if you look at this, if you look at what I've written up here, minus y equals two to the four minus y. In other words, zero equals two to the four. But remember, we're limited to four bits. If this was an eight bit number, it would be two to the eight minus y. Two to the four is one zero 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 zero. We're limited to four bits. It is zero. If you limit yourself to four bits and ignore everything after that, you, you keep it when you're doing the math. But at the end, you just say, okay, now it's just the last four bits. Two to the four does equal zero. See, that's the trick you keep in mind. This works because we're limiting ourselves to a certain number of bits, and we use that number of bits in the math. So I've proven that this is reversible. And I've also shown you, using positional notation, why inverting the bits and adding one is the same as this. But let's do a little bit of algebra to make it even more clear. I've already established one minus the digit is the opposite bit. So if we take y, one minus e, the first digit, times two to the three, plus one minus f, times two to the two, plus one minus g, times two to the one, plus one minus h, times two to the zero, plus one. I have flipped all the bits, and I've added one. So let's do the algebra. We get, if I write all this out, two to the three, minus e, times two to the three, plus two to the two, minus f times two to the two, plus two to the one, minus g times two to the one, plus two to the zero, minus h times two to the zero, plus one. So I just wrote all that out. Well, now let's just rearrange a little bit and clean everything up. Let's do the numbers first. Two to the three, plus two to the two, plus two to the one, plus two to the zero, plus one. So that's those, that one, that one, and that one. And then, 
Let's do these. Minus e times 2 to the 3, minus f times 2 to the 2, minus g times 2 to the 1, minus h times 2 to the 0. But I can pull this negative out, so we get negative e times 2 to the 3, plus f times 2 to the 2, plus g times 2 to the 1, plus h times 2 to the 0. That's y. This is just positional notation for y. So this is just minus y, minus y. What about this? Well, 1 is also known as 2 to the 0. We have 2 to the 0. 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 0 equals 2 times 2 to the 0 equals 2 to the 1. That is actually 2 to the 1. Now we have 2 to the 1 and 2 to the 1, which is 2 to the 2. We got two of these. That's 2 to the 3. Then we got two of these, which is 2 to the 4, equals 2 to the 4 minus y. Boom. So now I have thoroughly demonstrated how negating works. What about subtraction? That's even easier. x minus y equals x plus negative y. So if this is all true, then I should be able to substitute right in. Equals x plus 2 to the 4 minus y. Or if I reorder it, x minus y plus 2 to the 4. Well, there's x minus y, but what about this 2 to the 4? Remember, we're restricting ourselves to 4 bits. Once again, 2 to the 4 equals 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. The 4 bits that matter are 0. If we add 2 to the 4 to anything, to any 4-bit number, if we add 2 to the 4 to any 4-bit number, it cannot change those 4 bits. It'll add to the bits after, but it will not change the four bits that matter. It is a no operation. It doesn't happen if we restrict ourselves to four bits. So we keep it in there until the very end, and then we say, okay, after we've done all our math, we chop it off to the last four bits. And those four bits cannot have been affected in any way by that two to the four being there. So if we restrict ourselves to a certain number of bits, x minus y is x plus this. That's it. That's the entire proof of fixed width two's complement addition. And now you can see why everybody uses it and it's really, really cool. So what about zero? One of the things I kept talking about with sine magnitude and one's complement is positive and negative zero. Am I saying we don't have that? Well, with four bits, zero is zero, 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 zero. That's positive zero in other formats. Let's take the two's complement of zero. Flip the bits, add one, and you can see that we're gonna carry the entire way, we're gonna absolutely carry the entire way, and the last four bits, remember, only the last four bits matter, is zero. If you negate zero, you still get zero, and you get the same zero, not a negative zero, the same zero. Now you say, what happens to that extra one if it goes off the end? Don't we have carries and borrows? We do. There is a condition called overflow. If you add two numbers and the new number is bigger than the thing can contain, like, this can hold up to 7 in 4 bits, and if you have 13, it won't fit. And so the CPU, whatever's doing the math, can read that bit, and it can say, hey, you know, set the, set the flag. So it is used, but for this demonstration, it doesn't matter. That's an extra thing. If we assume that we're using sane numbers that don't overflow the container, if we're just trying to show that the math works for all valid inputs, because if it overflows, it was an invalid input. For all valid inputs, this works. So we do not have two zeros. So what do we have? Well, what was the bit pattern for a negative zero? It was this, a one followed by all zeros. However long, you know, 20 zeros if you want. If it's a 64-bit number, it's one in 63 zeros. This was negative zero. Well, what is it here? What is it here? Take the two's complement. So flip the bits, O, one, one, one. Add one, and you can see once again, we're gonna carry all the way over. We're gonna carry, 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 but this time, instead of getting one and four zeros and then chopping off that one, we get one and three zeros. In other words, we get it back. When you negate it, becomes itself. But what is it? If we treat this as a four bit number, it's eight. But this is the sine bit. The sine bit is not a number bit. This is the magnitude. The magnitude is still in there. So how do we have a negative positive number? It's not, it's negative eight. That's just how it's implemented in the math. Let's do an example. If we have negative eight, this is negative eight. Let's say we add a five to it. Let's say we have positive five, which is a 101. Let's add them together and see what we get. One, oh, one, one. Well, this is still negative. So let's take the two's complement to this. So flip the bits, 
0010 add 1. It becomes 1100, or 0011, if I don't reverse it. Well, what is that? That's 3. And the first bit is 0, so it's positive. We successfully unnegated it. What is 5 minus 8? It's negative 3. This is negative 3. So it works. The negative 8, the most negative number that's supposed to be a negative 0, does work, but there's no positive 8. This is the trick to two's complement. If you have n bits, however many bits, in this case n is 4, n bits, then you can represent negative 2 to the n minus 1 up to and including 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1. So if n is 8, 2 to the n is 256. 2 to the n minus 1 is 128. You can represent negative 128 to 127. If the first bit is a 0, it's positive or 0. If the first bit is 1, it's negative. The negative 0 has been repurposed into a functional negative number. So now, no waste. It's not symmetrical. The highest positive magnitude is lower than the highest negative magnitude. But at least it's not wasted. It's there and can be used. That is another magical thing about 2's complement. You don't need subtraction circuitry. Subtracting is just negate and then add. Nice and easy. Also, the numbers end up being cyclic. Let's say, just because my board is only so big, we have a 3-bit number. n equals 3. So we can represent 2 to the 2 negative up to 2 to the 2 minus 1 positive, or negative 4 to 3. Let's start at negative 4. Negative 4 is 1, 0, 0. Remember that extra negative is the negative 0 in the other formats. It's 1 followed by all zeros. Negative 3 is 1, 0, 1. Negative 2 is 1, 1, 0. Negative 1 is 1, 1, 1. And there's a programming trick. Anytime you want all 1s, absolutely all 1s across it, it's always negative 1. So let's wrap around. Let's add 1 and just chop off to 3 bits. 0 is 0, 0, 0. Instead of 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 is 0, 0, 1. 2 is 0, 1, 0. 3 is 0, 1, 1. And if we add 1 again, we'll come back to negative 4. So if you start at the most negative number and keep adding 1, you'll go numerically increasing and wrap around. Random little fun tidbit. The final thing to say is what happens if you need your number to be bigger? Let's say we have a 4-bit number. Let's do negative 5. So 4 bits, 5 is that, so negative 5 is 1010 oh, oh, plus 1, 1011. Oh, so negative 5 equals 1011. That's if it's 4 bits big. What is it if it's 8 bits big? 1111, 1011. 10 bits? 1111111011. If you want to make a number bigger, you sign extend. Remember how this is the sign bit? If it's 1, it's negative. If it's 0, it's not negative. The sign bit, you just extend it to make it bigger. Just extend it. So if we had positive 5, then that would be regular 5 is 0101. So if you wanted that to be 10 bits, 0000001. You just take whatever the first bit is and you copy it as many times as you want. This is the equivalent of if we have, you know, 3.2. We can say 0, 0, 0, 3.2, We can put infinite zeros either way. This is the equivalent of that. Well, if both of these are still negative 5 and 5, they should add to 0, shouldn't they? Well, 1 and 1, carry, carry again, carry again, carry again. So that's the four bits that we had originally that were the number. And now it's all the ones and zeros we added. But we have a carry, so we're going to get you know, 1 plus 0 plus 1 carry is going to be 0 carry, 0 carry, 0 carry, all the way. No matter how many of these we add, no matter how far we go, eventually we'll just get that. And then we chop it off to 10 bits. Is that 10? Excellent. Chop it off to 10 bits, and it's going to be right. And look, it's 0. Even though some of those look like 6s, don't worry about it. That's 0. So anytime you want to make the number bigger, just sign extend. And that's really all there is to it. And you can do multiplication, division, exponentiation, and other math, but that's more sophisticated algorithms. It's nothing so easy. But that is more than enough to demonstrate the magic of two's complement and why it's, it's elegant. Anything that's elegant, I just love it. So if you think I haven't covered this well enough, if I've made a mistake, or you want me to elaborate or expand on some element of two's complement, let me know. In the meantime, I'll be seeing you.